Okay, I think we've got everybody. So good afternoon and welcome to our next series of um, Recover and Rise. So as you can see on the screen, we're Series 3 Systems and Productivity, and we've got the brilliant Lisa Kerr with us today talking about all sorts of wonderful apps and systems, digital tech that can really help you get organised. I, for one, are absolutely really looking forward to this because I really need to get organised. Um, so just a little quick run through because I don't want to eat into Lisa's time, um, but just a little quick run through. Here we are with productivity, online tools that your business needs. And as I say, Lisa's going to talk to us about that shortly. Um, next week, just to give you a quick overview, we are jo being joined by Chris White, who's going to talk to us about cyber and keeping safe online. For those of you who came to his webinar um, a couple of months ago, it will be slightly different. There's going to be more hints and tips on how to keep safe. Um, if you didn't come to his webinar, please come this time because Chris is absolutely brilliant and has got some absolutely fantastic tips. And then next Thursday, we are doing a webinar on accessing the experts where we've got our digital champions coming to talk to us about some of the case studies that they've been looking after and how funding works um, and, and what happens when you actually apply to get support from a digital champion. We're also going to be joined by the Business Hot House and we're going to be joined by the lovely Natalie from Freedom Works, who's also going to be giving us a case study. So we've got lots of interesting um, people to come and talk next Thursday. So again, please join us for that. Um, and then moving on, and I'm very conscious that I'm talking quickly because I don't want to eat into Lisa's time. Um, moving on, the next series, which starts after Christmas in January by Always Possible, is now available to book. So it's all about growth expansion, automation, online sales, cybersecurity, and keeping product productivity high, even when we're working apart. So if you're interested in that, it is available now to book. Um, my last few slides are all about the funding that's available through the Business Hot House, Low Case and Rise. And for those of you who haven't joined us before, these are three absolutely brilliant um, support services that are available at the moment um, for small and medium enterprises. And then as a link to our digital champions who are offering a fully funded eight hours of free specialist support. And as I say, you can come along next Thursday and find out a lot more about that and um, get a chance to talk to them. But without further ado, I'm not going to take up any more time because I want to pass straight over to Lisa um, to start her brilliant presentation. So Lisa, over to you and welcome. Thanks, Cheryl. Hi, everyone. OK. So first of all, can everyone see that? Can I have a few thumbs up? Thank you, Cheryl. Excellent. Everyone can hear me? Brill. All right. So today's session is about your essential productivity tools. So what are the tools that you can use to help you as a small business? And I pitched this specifically at thinking about small businesses. Um, so anyone from people working on their own all the way through to people with a couple of hundred staff because these tools are actually useful for everyone. So I know the session said team productivity, but don't think that you have to have a massive team to be able to use some of these tools. You can use them if you're working on your own as well. So just a little bit of background about me, what I do and why I use all these productivity tools. Um, so <clears throat> generally I'm a business strategy advisor and leadership coach um, and I do growth champion, digital champion and mentoring work um, and I've put at the bottom there data analytics and excel master. I sometimes call myself geek and dweeb that's probably more appropriate but it didn't sound so professional so uh, quite fond of data and analytics and very fond of productivity. Um, and I've had roles working from very small SMEs all the way up to global corporates um, and working as chief finance officer and chief operating officer, um, as well as professional services. So across all of those years, I have used lots of different tools. I've seen lots of different businesses. 
and that's what's given me this interest and that's what's given me the background to be able to talk to you about quite a lot of tools today. So this is your whistle stop tour of some of the things that are out there. I must add, I am not on commission from any of them. I'm going to talk about quite a lot of them. I'm sure some of them you will know more than I do about the tools. So these are just things that I genuinely use and I'll give you my views on which I prefer and why and which you can use in different scenarios. Just a couple of nice client comments there about me, um, but just things about adding value to the business. And I think that's the key for productivity is understanding that the more productive you can be, the more efficient you're actually adding value to your business as well as getting time back in your day, which everyone likes to have. A fun fact to get the day started. Did you know care is pronounced care? So my business name, Consulting with Care, has a dual meaning. As well as being my surname, it's one of my core values. I care about doing a great job for clients. And how do I do that? Productivity for profitability. It's all about productivity. So I've developed a framework, Productivity for Profitability, which reviews a business across four areas, perspective, performance, people, and process. Perspective, thinking about what's your business purpose and goal. Performance, how is your business performing, both financially and operationally. People, do you have structure the style for your people to thrive and process do your systems and processes support you to deliver excellence to your customers and you might be thinking how does productivity fit into all of these and that's what we're going to cover today so firstly perspective we're going to look at mindamo which is a strategic mind mapping tool Performance, looking at data visualizations. So Google Data Studio, Microsoft Power BI, two examples here. For your people, so many communication tools. I'm not gonna cover all of these in detail. I will talk about some of them. So Zoom and Teams as online video calling, WhatsApp and Slack, examples of comms, kind of instant messaging and Slido and Mentimeter are for audience participation. And then process, again, millions of apps out there. I'm going to cover some in more detail than others. Project management tools, Trello, Monday, Todoist, collaboration tools, so OneDrive, SharePoint, Google Drive, Google Workspace. And the final one, how to get rid of your paper notebooks forever with GoodNotes. So without further ado, as there was so much to cover, as Cheryl said, we've, I've rattled through all of those slides. What I've actually done is I've recorded a video showing me going through quite a few of these apps. And I go through them very, very quickly just to give you an idea of what's out there. So I will talk about them as we go. <clears throat> but my aim is to just give you a really, really quick overview of some of these tools that you may or may not have seen before. And then at the end, I will stop and I can go through in more detail the ones that people are most interested in. So I've got a number of them up and running, ready to show you examples of. But as you can imagine, we'd be here all week if I tried to show you how to use every one of these tools. All right, so to start with, just pause it there just to check. Can everyone see the video on screen now? Yeah, thanks, Malcolm. See so you nodding there. Excellent. So this first tool, this is called Mindomo. This is a mind mapping tool. And quite often when you think about kind of team brainstorming, you often picture yourself in a room, everyone's got loads of post-its, you stick things around walls, which is fantastic during lockdown, not so good. And if you want to take your mind maps, your planning with you, I can think of many examples where I've done this in corporates and then we've rolled up all the big flip chart sheets and then we pass them across to someone to type them all up at the end of the day. 
Um, so MindMO is a brilliant little tool that enables you to create mind maps online, but takes it a step further as well. And you'll see a theme with all of these tools that they all offer similar functions in slightly different ways. And they are all, and my comments on them are as up to date as they can be as at today. So a really important thing for everyone to remember as well is that these apps get updated constantly. They are constantly improved. They constantly have more integrations with other apps. And actually over time, they all start to look quite similar. So if you had compared say Zoom and Teams at the start of lockdown, they were incredibly different. If you compare them now, you can switch from one to the other quite easily because they've each integrated functions that the other one brought out first that people liked. And over time, they bring their own versions out. So that's a good thing to note because don't go and just get every piece of software out there because so many of them do almost the same things. So mind demo, mind mapping. You can create a mind map, you can share it. So you can share it with people inside your organization, you can share it externally, and you can work on this together. So I could be sat here with a mind map open, I could share the link with you guys, and we could all work on it together and we'd all see that appearing at the same time. It also means that you can add notes, you can allocate tasks to people, you can put calendar dates on things, and then you can switch it and it goes into a Gantt view. So if you want Gantt charts of projects, you can create a mind map that goes into a Gantt chart. You can play through it. So you can create actual slideshows and recordings of how you did your mind map. So if you wanted to present a strategy to the company, you could do that. And what you will see, and I'm just gonna play you the quick clip here, which was, this was actually me when I was planning what slides I should do for the um, Worthing and Ada Better Business show earlier this year. Um, so you will see here, and it goes quite quickly, but it's more to get the concept of each time you add a new idea, the map just sorts itself out. So it fixes the sizing, you can drag things from one side to the other. So I'll start this playing. And this is also a tool itself in Mindermo. So if you see here, the cursor goes to the top, you've got tools and you've got playback the diagram history and it plays the way you created your entire mind map. So you can even see the way your mind worked as you went through it. So you can, as I said, don't expect you to read it as it goes, but you can see the way I was building up my thoughts. I was moving things around. I was adding subcategories. And then at the end there, it came back to the full one. So whistle stop tour of that, really happy to go through more of that at the end, just to give you an idea of what's out there. Um, that one links, in fact, pretty much all of these apps link. So you can use them on your desktop, you can use them on your iPad, you can use them on your mobile phone. They have apps and they're all cloud based. So anything you put on them, you can have it with you wherever you are. Okay, moving on. So next one is looking at business performance. So data visualization. Again, this is something that some people might be more familiar with than others. These are some of the tools that I don't think are used as widely at the minute. Um, talking about uh, the one on the left there is Microsoft Power BI. The one on the right is Google Data Studio. Again, they do very, very similar things. The background to these is about visualizing data. It can be data from your company, so you can upload spreadsheets. It can be data from the web. You can link different sources into it. And you'll see on the examples that I'm going to show in a minute, that which are using the Google Data Studio, um, that you can pull from things like Google Analytics. So I'm sure many of you are familiar with the Google Analytics on your website. That effectively is a Google Data Studio visualization of your web traffic. So they all, they all link through. And again, Data Studio and Power BI, they work very, very similarly. 
So your decision on those is more likely to be based on what software you're running as a business in general. So if you're running the Google Suite, if you're running Google Mail, you will probably go towards the Google Data Studio. If you're running entirely in Microsoft Office, you would go for the Power BI. Um, Power BI, you have to have the license to use it. So there's also very little free in Power BI. It kind of links with the overall Microsoft 365 offering. Um, whereas the Data Studio, you can use that more easily for free as well as the paid versions. So I'm just going to start the video again here. So what you can see here, first of all, and I just picked a template so if you want to play with any of these things, so I didn't log in, I didn't put any of my own data in here. I just picked one of their templates. You can see here it's a 2016 Olympic. So the data itself is not, not the important thing. This is the view that you get when you come onto this as a viewer. So you can see here, you get the graph, you get the data, but it's not in edit mode here. So this is what, if you shared this with people inside or outside your organization, this is what you would get. Um, example of this, so I actually use this or one of my clients uses this um, to keep track of weekly statistics for the business. Um, and they're doing that by uploading information that is downloaded from their main planning system. So it's not possible to link the two together. Um, in that instance, it's possible to link lots of sources to this, but if you can't, you can just do a CSV export from any system and then you can upload that into the Google Data Studio and, and just refresh that. What you then do, if it's, if it's you running it, you can see at the top here, we've got the edit button. So I'll play the video on a little bit more. You can see I've clicked and I'm going into edit mode. As soon as I do that, it's broadly the same screen, but it starts to show me what the data source is. So sample Rio Olympics data. And you can see on the right, a little bit fuzzy, but you can see available fields. Now, pause again there. When you click on one of the graphs, so I've clicked on this one here, this is talking about did companies remember the ads? And I know it's a little bit small, but it's showing you there, did people remember Nike, Coca-Cola, Tide, McDonald's. So when it's just data, but effectively it's, it's showing you all of them and how many people remembered seeing them. When we click on that graph, you can see over here, we get a whole load more data pop up now and it's saying what data was used for that particular graph, what category, what metrics, far too much to go through everything on this session. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show you changing some of the graphs, just changing the way they present, changing the colors, changing the style. Um, so you can see how easy it is because it looks a little bit scary at first, but once you get used to this, it's actually quite easy to just create a load of graphs and things. And then you can share this. So this could be kind of your internal tracking. You can share this with your team. Um, it's really, really helpful for, for visualizing data and as I say, Power BI looks almost identical to this when you go into the screen for that. So I've gone up to the top, I've got the chart style currently on the bar. I'm just clicking here to change the style and it says how many bars do you want? So there were 10, I've said show three. You can see immediately it just shows the top three. So this chart at the left, the visualization has changed straight away. Then I'm doing the same. The one below, it's a pie chart. It's an open pie, like a donut chart. I said, actually, let's make it a closed pie chart. And immediately down here, that changes. And then I've changed the colors to say, do the colors by the kind of pie slice rather than single color. You can brand this, you can change the colors, you can put text on. As you can see, you can put these icons at the top. You can pretty much do anything you want to. You can see on the right here, the vast number of charts and things available there. You can also use just straight text. So it might be, you might want to use this as kind of a weekly or a monthly update to your team. So you could have some key graphs that are pulling through from the data 
and then you might have a commentary box or you might have you know the ceo the md's thoughts for the month it can be a communication tool as well as a data visualization tool so lots and lots of ways that this can be used and then at the top there i've just clicked back at the top there i just clicked back into the view mode and you will see the difference so i was editing when i click back into view There you go, pause at the right time. You can see there, that's the view back to how everyone else will see it. And these two charts here that I changed, that's how they look for everyone. This one here, just to show, when I went into um, Google Data Studio, I just picked a template, which in that case was that Olympics data. It looked very similar to this. This screenshot is from the Power BI template picker. So you can see here, and there's so many templates on all of these, you can build your own or you could take one someone else has created and you can just switch your data in as the data source. So it's quite easy to get started. But as you can see from some of these screenshots, it's very similar. It's broadly, you've got a blank piece of virtual paper and you can create as many different varieties of information as you want to. Other useful points for this is you can have, you have kind of the power in the central processing bit. So in Data Studio, in the back end of Data Studio or the back end of BI, you can have as many of these running as you like, but you can decide who in your organization sees them. So you might have a management dashboard that actually you only want your management team to see, and you could have a different dashboard that gives all of your team some key operational data and you can give user access to those different things. So you can have one source of data that's running everything, but where different people see different views, different dashboards off the back of that. So that's a really helpful note on those. Okay, moving on. So just going to grab a drink. So the next bit is looking at people and communications. We've got Zoom up there. I'm hoping I don't need to say too much about Zoom given we're all on it and I think we've all uh, kind of lived on it over the last 18 months. Um, same with Teams. And as I said earlier, the two of those now, if you're using them for video conferencing, they now look very, very similar. They now have almost the same functionality. Um, I am a huge Microsoft Office fan. But for me, at the minute, Zoom still just about has the edge. So some of the views, some of the chat boxes, um, I don't believe, and I've not used it in the last couple of weeks, but I don't believe Teams has yet put the private chat function in that Zoom has. So if you raise a chat in a Teams meeting, everyone in the meeting sees it, where Zoom, you can chat to everyone or you can chat to people individually, which could be quite helpful, particularly if you're using it for networking. Um, so I don't plan to show videos of those. Um, one thing to note on Zoom um, that's also quite handy, and Zoom and Teams both have a whiteboard option, but it's a whiteboard on your computer. With Zoom, you can also connect it to your iPad. And I don't mean opening Zoom on the iPad. I mean, you have Zoom on your PC but then you connect it to screen share to your iPad, and then you could be drawing handwritten notes and things on your iPad that's actually projecting through your Zoom screen share. That sounds a bit complicated, but if that's one of the things people want to see at the end, I will show you how that works. So that can be really helpful because I've always found that the online whiteboards are just no use to me because I can't really write with a mouse. I've just, I've never cracked that smooth writing with a mouse. I need to do it with my Apple Pencil on my iPad. Um, next two down here are WhatsApp and Slack. <clears throat> Again, I'm not planning to show loads of information about them. And there are many, many other kind of chat functions out there. So use whichever ones you like. Um, Slack has, Slack is good if you're using Teams. So as in lots of Teams within your organization, 
Um, so where I've seen this work really well is in a marketing organization where they were working with lots of different clients, and lots of different projects. And you can just set up lots of Slack channels for each of those different clients or each of the projects. And you can put hashtags in them. You can at mention things so you can have chats going on across channels and you can attach documents within Slack. Um, you can do the same within WhatsApp. Again, these get updated all the time, particularly Slack. So Slack now integrates with more and more and more of the other tools. Um, and when I say integrates, um, there was a session uh, last week talking about integrations where um, the lady spoke about Zapier as a way of kind of making everything connect. For me, I like things that just connect automatically. So all of the things I'm talking about today, you have the option to interconnect them all by just clicking within those apps. They're all set up already as available integrations in the apps. Um, something people might not always be aware of on WhatsApp. So if you want to use that for business, um, you can set up teams within that so that you can be chatting within particular teams. Um, again, depends on how quick you are with the typing out things on your phone. Um, WhatsApp still not available on the iPad, but it is available on the desktop now. Um, people don't always clock that one because you have to have it on your phone first. So you can't create a WhatsApp account on your laptop. But if you have WhatsApp on your phone, you can download the desktop app and it then connects through to your phone WhatsApp. And the difference that means, particularly for me, is that you can then type all your messages on your laptop and it sends it through. So in a team perspective, that's one of the things I find really helpful because you're more likely to be sending slightly longer notes. Um, I use two computer screens um, when I'm working here and I tend to have WhatsApp open on one of the screens all the time. And I use that quite a lot with clients as well, just to, you know, quick back and forwards far easier to spot than if you've got emails that you're trying to look out for because we all just get so many emails every day. Um, whereas WhatsApp, you can just have that set up interactions with your key clients. Um, I use WhatsApp with some clients. I use Slack with other clients. Again, I try to fit in as a consultant with whatever tech my clients are using. But the great thing about all of this tech is it's all so similar in its approach. It's designed to be user friendly. So switching from one to the next to the next actually isn't that hard because they all follow pretty much the same logic, which is really great. And the last ones on this page are Mentimeter and Slido. These are audience participation tools. You may or may not have seen these. You may or may not have realized that you've seen these. So if you've been on presentations um, where you've been asked to fill in a survey, Zoom has its own poll function within Zoom, but it doesn't allow for kind of very much differentiation of what you're asking. It tends to be just the sort of blue bar poll in the middle of the screen. These add a lot more functionality and flexibility. And you can use both of them for free for a limited number of questions for people. Um, and there are paid versions if you want to use them for more than that. And I'll show you a bit more of those in a minute. Um, difference between the two, again, they are very, very similar. So it's just whichever one you prefer. Slido does have the ability now to integrate with PowerPoint, which I will show you at the end of this. Um, Hopefully it will work. Last night their tech was a bit on the blink, so it was intermittent. So we're hoping it's going to work. It was working this morning, um, but that runs from PowerPoint now. So again, it just shows you that all of these things are becoming interconnected all of the time. So you can start the audience participation poll from within PowerPoint. You don't have to go onto a separate tool. So back to my video. So just to show one quick example, this one is Mentimeter. So this is one of the things you can do on Mentimeter. You can ask your audience. <clears throat> this is an actual example from when I ran a business planning session for the Worthing Chamber. This was just before the first lockdown was easing. Um, so this was when people were still 
very much unsettled. Um, and one of the questions was, what three words describe how you feel about the easing of lockdown measures? And we gave people a link so you can give a web link, you can tell people how to get into the website and put in a code to get onto the questionnaires <clears throat> or the ways that work really well, given most people now have a smartphone, is you can put a QR code into your presentation, people scan the QR code on their phone and it takes you straight into the polls. So in this case, people would have just typed in three words on their phone, hit send, and it creates this um, word cloud live in front of you. And as you can see here, the more pe the same people said the same thing, the bigger the words get. Um, this one, Mentimeter is better than Slido at word clouds. So again, they're, they're all very similar, but it's useful to consider how each works and what you might want to use them for and then decide which one you would want to go for. Um, so this one, really like it on the word clouds. It comes up with these kind of colourful, bright clouds and it creates them really, really neatly. With all of these things, if you want to use them a lot for your businesses, you can get the paid versions of them and they allow you to brand them. Um, so I tend to use these just one or two slides when I'm doing online training sessions. So I'm not so concerned about that having my branding on it. I'd rather have the free version and not have the branding because I don't use it that much. If you wanted to use this within your organization, if you wanted to use it kind of for big team participation, you can use it if you were doing conferences. Um, so as an example, when I was at the um, Institute of Chartered Accountants annual conference, which as you can imagine is quite a big event, they ran Slido um, throughout that conference. <clears throat> and so they asked everyone to log in at the start. So this is where you may have seen these in use. You wouldn't realize because they would have had the company's branding on them. Um, you log in at the start and then every time a question pops up on the big screen, they say, go to your phones and tap your answers. And you see that all coming up on the screen. So that is the tech they are using. It is exactly the same tech that you can get for free or for very low cost. Okay, moving on. Apologies if anyone's brain is blowing up at this stage. As I say, a lot to cover, and I'm very happy to come back at the end to any particular points. So the next ones. These are some of the very, very, very many productivity tools out there to help with processes, to help with sharing information. Apologies, I'm a bit hoarse today, so I need to keep, uh, keep drinking. I've got a bit of a cold. Um, I've grouped these here. <clears throat> so the top three I would put into the project and task management categories. The middle three there, um, and I've put the Google Drive icon, but I'm going to talk more about the um, Google Workspace. They're all collaboration tools um, for sharing documents, for sharing information, um, different things, different purposes. We'll chat through those. And the last on there at the bottom um, that I'm guessing fewer of you may have heard of this one is GoodNotes. This is my absolute favorite app of all time for the iPad. Again, I probably should be on commission for this one because the number of times I've recommended it to people is absolutely beyond ridiculous. So I will show you how it works. Um, this one is a paid app, but I think it's about nine or 10 pounds now. They uh, doubled the price when they upgraded it, but I would, I would say it's the best uh, five pounds I ever spent as I bought it years ago when it was quite cheap. Maybe I will contact them and say, can I start having some commission, please? <laughs> so, right, let me show you <clears throat> some of these things. So this one is Todoist. You can use it for task management and project management. It's broadly a to-do list, so it's not a huge project management app. It doesn't have as much functionality as some of the others that I'll show you in terms of attaching things and kind of managing timelines in, in any big way beyond calendars. What you can see here, we have the inbox. We've got 
some dates. So today, upcoming, we can set up filters and labels. Works the same across all of these things. So if you at mention someone, it tags them. If you at a project, it puts it in there. If you hashtag, you get a label. Um, very similar to how social media tagging works, to how tagging works within the Google suite, to how it works within the MS team suite. So as I say, they all work in a very similar way just to make it easier because otherwise we'd all be completely lost. So I've got my favorites here. You can see here the ones with spots, marketing, um, biz dev, they are projects. You can see down here and ones with little tags, funnily enough our tags, little, little Christmas card labels there, work stuff and family stuff. So you won't be surprised to know this isn't how my to doist normally looks. I've uh, taken all my client related things out of here. So uh, the things in here are not what I do on a day to day basis. They're more for examples. Um, the way you use this, though, is if you've got projects, you would put them into these project areas. So I've got my company admin. I've set up an example project to show you. I've got marketing as a project in its own right. But you can also just use your inbox. And you'll see here there are no project references on any of these things. So this inbox is if you just think, oh, I must, mustn't forget to do that. Mustn't forget to do my slides. For this presentation. I could have ticked it off because obviously I've done it, but I've left it there just to show you. You can prioritize things. So you can see here that this one has a red circle. This one has a white circle. So the red is, I called it a priority one. It automatically highlights it red for you to say you've tagged this as something important. But I've also put dates on. So my inbox is showing all the things that were coming up tomorrow at the point that I did this. Today is a really helpful thing because as long as you put dates on everything, you can come to this in the morning, look at it and say, this is what I need to do today and really use that to kind of guide your day. And then we've got upcoming, which is calendar and we've got projects. So again, I'm just going to rattle through this to show you how it works. So to add a task, in the inbox, you just start typing and it's very, very clever. So update LinkedIn profile. I could have gone on to the schedule at the bottom to say when I want this done by, but what I can also do is think, oh, I need to do this tomorrow. As soon as I start typing tomorrow, T-O-M is all it takes, it automatically does it. And actually I want it tomorrow at 10 a.m., done that automatically. And you can see the schedule changes at the bottom there. So it's once you get used to typing things, it's so quick. You can click on the right to set a priority, but you can also just type P1 and it says it's priority one, which would give it the red circle around it. You can add a label or you can add a label by just hitting the at. And I've said that's work stuff. And then I've said, OK, let's add that as a task. You can see it's gone there into my inbox. It's for tomorrow. It says you've got a day left. It says how many tasks you've got due. It's labelled. And then when we get to tomorrow, it will go into my today list of saying things I need to do today. But what I've then done is thought, actually, that relates to a project. This isn't just a generic thing I'm talking about. I just dragged it across into my example project. So now you can see my project has update my LinkedIn profile. It's tomorrow, it's work stuff, but it's gone from my inbox. So inbox is where you just kind of dump thoughts that are in your head, and then you can come in here and organize them to where you want, to, want them to really go. And if I go on to upcoming, you can see a calendar view there that gives you all of the tasks with the dates that are coming up in the future.
just showing here the label. So I'd labeled that as work stuff. I can also click on work stuff and see all the tasks that are in there against work stuff. That's the only one in this case. Here's something that's quite useful. So just to show how everything's integrated. So this is my email inbox. I just emailed myself. But if you look at the top there, you can see how many things I've got integrated into my Outlook. So I've got my HubSpot, which is my CRM system with an Outlook add-in. Boomerang comes in Outlook anyway. It gives you some nifty features. Trello is another um, to-do project management tool that I'll show you briefly in a second. That's integrated. I've got Todoist integrated. And what you can do, I'm clicking here, add to Todoist inbox. So I've emailed myself just because I didn't want to show you all my client's emails. So if, some, if a client emails you with something you need to do, I've literally clicked add to Todoist inbox. So I'm still in my Outlook. I haven't left my Outlook. I go to my Todoist inbox. And at the bottom there, you can see my email pick up the dry cleaning. So I emailed it, literally clicked that button from Outlook. It's gone straight into Todoist as a task. And from there, it's gone into my inbox. But I thought, actually, I'll stick that on my example project. That's where that needs to go. And the good thing here, and I'm not going to follow it all the way through, but you can see there that it turns orange and it's got a hyperlink on that. What that actually does, if you forward something from your email into Todoist, you can click the link and go back to that email. So it forwards it as a hyperlink to the email. The one thing to note here is it's a hyperlink to the email where you currently stored it. So if you forward something from your inbox and you then file it from your inbox to a client folder, for example, this link back won't then work because you've moved the source document. Um, so that's just one thing to note. So again, super, super useful. Um, Todoist is my favorite one. I use that all the time. Um, this one is a more detailed project management tool. So this one is called Monday. <clears throat> Not going to show you a whole video of this, um, but just to show you the layout of the Monday board. Monday, you have to pay for, um, so it's not, you know, it's not a free cheap solution. Um, but if you want to use it like this, you do have to pay for licenses for each of your users. Um, but they're not too much. I think it's like about ten pounds a person per month. Um, so I would say Monday is if you want a bigger project management going on. Um, this is an example from a client who was setting up a gallery and an exhibition. And we've got timelines, we've got deadlines, we've got statuses, you can search by status, you can have items with sub items, you can allocate owners to it, so you can have your whole team involved, you've got comment boxes, you can add all kinds of attachments. And this one has a really good link to a Gantt chart view. So again, a lot of these tools you can look at them on calendar views, you can look at them on board views, you can look at them on list views, you can integrate into calendars, you can get Gantt charts. You can see it looks very different. And I'm going to show you next one that is very, very similar. So this is Trello. So again, fundamentally does the same things as Monday. It looks very different. So Trello was always set out and designed in the card layout. Um, I'm showing you this one just because this is my best example of where I've set up a huge amount of information in one place. This is actually my son's special need assessment. Um, but I think it's good just to show you, you can use lots of tags. So we've got tags to say different things and you can have the tag telling you what it is that it's talking about. You've, you can see here we've got the paper clip, so we've got things attached, we've got comments, we've got people assigned, so assign myself to be doing things. We've got all the different boards. You can put images in things, so you could have an image at the top of each board to remind you what it is, 
But what I found useful was to put an image in here that actually was showing you what all these different tags are, which tags are available and what people want. Um, and where this is really, really useful, and again, lots of things integrate, this one integrates particularly well with um, Google and OneDrive. So you can see here, I've just clicked on guidance docs, which is this one over here. It says there are two attachments. So you would think that means there are two documents attached here. In actual fact, in the power-ups, and you can now have as many power-ups as you like with the free version of this, you used to only be able to get one power-up, but they changed that recently. Um, you can power up, I've connected it to Google Drive and OneDrive, you can connect all kinds of other things. But this OneNote alone has one attachment, which is actually to an entire Google Drive folder where I have stored all of this guidance documentation. And because it's attached to the Google Drive folder rather than the individual pieces, every time I add a new document into that Google folder, it automatically updates onto this Trello board. So this is a really nifty thing. So this, this board here has probably several hundred documents attached to it and that I was updating constantly. So I've done some big projects, but this one is probably the biggest project I've ever had to do filling out a special needs assessment. Uh, if anyone is doing one themselves, let me know because I have all kinds of guidance available here but really, really useful. So if you've got big projects to plan, if you've got lots of different things to assign out, um, Trello, definitely a really good example. And in the free version, you can have up to five workspaces on this one. Um, and as I say, lots of power-ups available for free, lots of additional functionality with all of these if you go for the paid versions. Okay, rattling through. This is SharePoint. SharePoint is a Microsoft tool and it's a communication tool. You can use this in a similar way to Teams to share information between your team when you're all inputting. This one here is an example of a communication site. So conscious of time, just gonna keep rattling through this just showing you that there are links, there are pictures, there are news articles, there are documents. So where this can be used um, for small companies and, and people don't always think of this is you can have a company intranet running just by using SharePoint. So you don't need to have some fancy web development for a company intranet site to share information with your teams. You can do it straight from here. And I'm just showing on the video here how easy it is to add a new text post. The key thing here is, again, I just picked one of the templates that they had available. So I have done no setting up on this. I just picked a template and I can edit it to put my own stuff in it. And what you'll notice from this video as well is that everywhere on this site, so I was adding a post and as you scroll down here, you can see the post has appeared there can click on the post, it shows the post that I've done. Um, but the key point on that one is that every step of that template, it was giving you a tutorial. And all of those blocks at the top were tutorials on how to set up a SharePoint site. And it's the same with all of these apps. When you first go into them, they automatically pop up tutorials saying, do you want a quick tutorial? Do you want to know how to use this? So you can find out loads just by doing that. And my final bit of video, coming up straight after this, Good Notes, as mentioned, this is the app. This is where you find it on the app store. So what you're seeing now, this is a screen recording of my iPad. Good Notes has lots of documents, so I can organize everything into folders, similar to the way you do on your computer drive. I set up an example folder and an example notebook here. I have folders for personal stuff. I have folders for client stuff. I have a separate folder for each client, separate notebooks. I can save into those folders PDF documents. I can mark them up. I can share them, I can export them. Just showing here that when I go onto the main page, I'm, I'm just 
writing away with the stylus welcome to good notes but that's actually quite hard to write you actually have to write words quite big to fit them on the screen but it has this function that you're now seeing here with a handwriting option where you actually get a pop-up box at the bottom and if you watch as I write along here you think oh don't you have to keep scrolling the box around but it's really clever as you write towards the end of the line it creates this blue box to the left and you just move and carry on writing so you're still writing on the same line but it's automatically giving you the next bit to write in so at the end of a line it gives you this little blue box which is actually back at the start of the next line so you're not scrolling around the page you just keep writing and it sorts it out it works out how big the line spacing is so it knows where the next line needs to be you can highlight things highlighted it there you can choose different colors just quickly showing the lasso function there if i want to move something around you lasso it you just drag it to where you want it to go you can put shapes you can put pictures you can put photos so um, a good example of this just pause that briefly good example is if you were um, at a presentation for example lots of people take photos of the screen and then try to take notes when you're at presentations you can actually just take a photo straight into good notes and then you can annotate it straight away so if you don't get slides ahead of presentations you can literally be screenshotting them or taking photos into good notes and immediately start writing up onto those slides what you think of those things i just shown the eraser thing there you can rub things out it's very easy to rub things out to change it there are lots of different pens available so there's so many different options on this and this is really just a very very quick one um, but the key point on this one is that it's all cloud-based again so rather than carrying notepads around you can have everything with you all of the time so whether it's on your ipad whether it's on your iphone um, i'm not sure if it's available for um Android devices, but there are very similar apps available. So you can keep everything with you at all times, but it's always secure. So as I said, each of my clients has a separate notebook in GoodNotes. So there's never a risk that if I leave, you know, if I left my phone on the train, my phone is on the train, it's got facial rec, you know, it, I've got a double authorization on everything. So it has to buzz my Apple Watch as well to let me into things. So I never have that worry of what if I left a notepad on the train? What if I was at a meeting and actually I brought the wrong notepad because I didn't have, you know, I've gone from one client to another, you don't have it. With good notes, everything is just available everywhere as you need it. All right, we are rapidly running out of time. So it's going to come back into the slideshow. And the last bit here. Hopefully the tech will work. So this is an example of Slido. So if you go into Slido, you can either put in the actual link, but if you've got a smartphone, you should be able to hover over that QR code and just follow the link and it should take you into Slido. Now, I don't have it up on mine because I can't use four bits of tech at the same time. That's beyond even me. But hopefully you are now getting the uh, option to say, select up to two digital tools that you would like to see more of. So you select them, you click the send. And there we go and you can see on the screen so this is where it's really great for audience participation you can see that as people click in as people submit their answers it's automatically updating and this is why these get used at conferences so often because it's really quite interesting if you've got like a hundred people in a room voting on things or giving thoughts on things to see it updating as it goes really really helpful All right.
anybody, anyone else want to participate? There we go. So Data Studio, looking very popular, thought that might be. Um, partly because people are less familiar with that one. Um, to do is mind demo, good notes. Yep, so Trello, really good interactive app. Alrighty, so I will. So that is an example of Slido. And as you saw, that ran from PowerPoint. So I didn't come out of my PowerPoint presentation to make that happen. So taken, taken directly from the uh, Slido page here, your go to interaction app for hybrid meetings. Um, but I've pasted this more to show you, you can use Slido with WebEx, PowerPoint, Teams, Google Slides, YouTube Live videos, everything links through to everything these days. Okay, that is it from me. Conscious we're running up to one o'clock, had a whole lot to cover there. So I will stop sharing there. Um, just hand back to Cheryl to see how many how many questions we've got or if people would just like me to go into the uh, data studio example and give a bit more on that if people want to stick around. <laughs> oh, Lisa, thank you so much. I think we all learned so much and everybody was interacting throughout all of your presentations. So oh, great. I, I couldn't obviously couldn't see that. <laughs> no, no, I don't think there's any specific questions. I just on the last call for any specifics, but there's loads of questions been going on all the way throughout. So I think as we're probably up to time, um, really, if anybody wants to contact Lisa, I'm going to do a shameless punt now for you, Lisa. Yeah. If you anybody can get a whole day of my support as a digital champion. So a whole day. I can give you a whole day on this. <laughs> imagine what, I, mean, I, I think I'm going to book that, Lisa, because I just think, imagine what you could learn with a whole day with Lisa. Yeah. You come out just, oh my gosh. So... If you would like to book a whole day with Lisa, yeah. then, <laughs> then go on to our Digital Champions link via Coaster Capital and get that booked because I am absolutely convinced that you will come out absolutely buoyed up with ideas of how to move forwards. Um, Lisa, you've been amazing. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much. Um, oh, thanks so much, Cheryl. You know, and my, my last comments, people, is, you know, brilliant if people want to have a day with me. But if not, if you're looking at these things, just try a few. So it'd be really easy to sign up to lots of them thinking, oh, that one's like five pounds a month and that one's ten pounds a month. And you're suddenly spending a hundred pounds a month mm. and actually lots of them do the same thing for you. So don't just jump in there have a quick look around them, have some of the free trials, but decide what you want to use them for first so that you use those trials properly mm. and then you decide which ones are going to work best for you and for your businesses. That's brilliant advice again. Thank you. Um, we, we've got Lisa's details on the slides. We are going to be sending out the slides and um, just had confirmation that all of these webinars are also going to be live on YouTube as well. So YouTube fame for us all. Um, wow. but we will be sending out the slides. So you've got Lisa's contact details. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody for attending. Um, we go again next week with a brilliant presentation by Chris, all on cybersecurity. And then Lisa and some of our digital champions will be back next Thursday to talk you through the process and talk you through what else you can um, chat with them about and what support you can get and what funding is out there. So I look forward to seeing you all again next Tuesday. And thank you again to Lisa from all of us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And great seeing everyone. Have a great afternoon, everybody. OK, bye now. Bye bye. Bye. Bye, Vicky.